probably if you saw the lineup of who is on the panel tonight, you will realize that this has got to be one of the most diverse uh, panels that iWork has put forth. I am the only person from the, from the United States here um, on this panel. And I'm going to let our panelists introduce themselves, uh, say where they are, what they do. And frankly, I think it's interesting to hear what the COVID kind of lockdown situation is in their countries, because it's a little bit different for all of us. But we have Leanne William, Eloise Matsui, Fiona McAdam, and Liv Machado on here. So I'm just going to go who's in order based on my screen. Uh, this is the one thing about Zoom I wish they would fix is that everyone's screen looks the same. Um, but so that for me is Liv. So Liv, we're gonna unmute, or you're, you are unmuted and um, let you tell everyone who you are and where you are from. Also, we um, would love for this to be an interactive uh, discussion. We're gonna have, we kind of have two topics that we're going to discuss. One being what you could be doing right now to stay, what you're doing right now to stay in front of your um, colleagues, coworkers, prospective clients, and current clients. And then we're going to talk about what you could be doing now to make sure you're best situated when we return to whatever this new normal looks like. But we'll get into that in a minute. At first, let's just take a few seconds and have everyone introduce themselves. So, Liv, you're up. So hello, everyone. Uh, Monica, thank you so much for inviting me. Uh, I'm from Brazil. I'm a lawyer from Brazil. I'm a partner of Tosini Freire, which is a full service firm. And uh, in Tosini, we work uh, mostly for creditors and investors. So we usually don't represent uh, debtors in judicial reorganization cases and restructuring cases. I've been working with restructuring for the past 11 years. Um, and um, to talk about, I don't know, Monica, if you want us to make a small introduction of how uh, of the COVID situation in already, or if you want us to do it later. Yeah, go ahead, say, tell everyone what's going on in Brazil. Cause I think this is something that came out of the morning session was how useful and interesting it was for people to know what it looks like around the world, that that might be relevant information for their clients. If they could say, oh, you know, I have contacts in Brazil and this is what I hear it's like there or the Caymans or yeah. London. So go ahead. Yeah, okay. Uh, so in Brazil, we have uh, 27 states and we have uh, different rules for each state regarding uh, the lockdown and the COVID situation. So there are only uh, two states that have been applying a, a lockdown itself, a proper one, which they, they shut down all the activities and uh, industries and commercial and everything. And in other states, uh, we only have this, what they call the essential uh, services and industries, which are hospitals and pharmaceutical companies, um, and the basic services. Uh, for example, in Sao Paulo, we have a situation everybody's working from home. So lawyers are working from home, everybody's working from home and only essential services are actually operating. We don't have a rule here that uh, if you go out, uh, someone will apply a fine or something. So we don't have like a punishment for that. Um, but pretty much the situation is everybody uh, is working uh, from home and only uh, basic services are working. So that's the, the overview of the situation here. Great. Thanks, Liv. Uh, Fiona is next on my screen. Hi, Monica. Thanks so much. Um, just wanted to say good morning, good afternoon, and good evening to everybody who's dialed in. Um, it's great to see you all and, and so fantastic that this is truly an international organization with people from Canada, Brazil, Hong Kong, and Dallas on, on just this panel. So for all of those of you who don't know me, I'm Fiona McAdam. I'm the chair for the Cayman Islands Network. Um, I was appointed with effect from um, January of this year. Um, so I work at Walkers um, in the Cayman Islands. I'm senior counsel there 
in the restructuring and insolvency department. Walkers is pretty much a full service firm with um, 10 locations across the world practicing six different um, laws. Um, before I arrived um, in the Cayman Islands, I previously worked with Latham and Watkins in London and Cadwallader, Wickersham and Taft. Um, in terms of what's going on in the Cayman Islands, um, I thought it might be helpful just to give you a very quick overview with respect to the court's reactions to COVID. So our Chief Justice in the Cayman Islands has implemented a number of proactive steps to ensure continuity of operations and access to justice in the Cayman Islands. So in essence, the Cayman courts are fully operational and it is business as usual. And the key point to take away from that is that although all the filings are being done electronically, um, court hearings are being done by video conferencing and Zoom, one of the key points to note that originating processes such as winding up petitions, writs, etc., can be validly issued electronically. And that's obviously critical because, you know, the digitization of filing has helped to prevent any legal proceedings being thwarted as a result of any practical obstacles that have been brought on by COVID. So I just want to, you know, key takeaway, Cayman Islands is a jurisdiction with a real can-do approach and has really been quite flexible in terms of, um, you know, responding to the COVID situation. Um, as a network, um, you know, obviously with all the social distancing that's going on, um, we're unfortunately not able to do any physical events. So we as a board have revisited our uh, um, initiatives for the year. And what we're trying to focus in, in on is the community aspect in the Cayman Islands to see how we can make a difference. And one of the key initiatives that we are supporting is there is a school in the Cayman Islands called John Gray High School. And we are supporting uh, the students there by mentoring. Um, but also there are a number of students there who um, unfortunately don't have access to Wi-Fi. You know, we're really lucky that we can all work from home remotely, etc. Um, and a lot of these students who are in their final year um, are finding it difficult to submit their final projects, etc. So we've tried to do our best in terms of supporting a handful of students in terms of giving them Wi-Fi devices and online tutoring so that they can complete their, their final year of schooling. So that's me in the Cayman Islands. So what? Thank you, Fiona. I was on mute. Next <laughs> in my boxes, it looks like Leanne Williams is next. Leanne, do you want to go ahead? Sure. Thanks, Monica. And again, I just want to echo just the thanks for being on this panel and um, being able to connect with women from literally around the world. I think it's just a fabulous forum. Uh, so. Again, my name is Leanne Williams. I uh, am in Toronto and apart from doing 16 loads of laundry a day and homeschooling an eight-year-old, I try to uh, be a bankruptcy lawyer, AKA attorney for the Americans um, that are on the, on the call. I've been practicing in Toronto for about 20 years and um, I've been doing you know, restructuring the whole time. I work at a boutique firm called Thornton Brett Finnegan. The only thing that we do is restructuring and litigation. And although we are a boutique and we only have an office in Toronto, we really do restructurings from coast to coast. Um, so we like to think of ourselves as the little firm that could. Uh, we have a rather large uh, group for, by Canadian standards. Um, Vis-a-vis -vis Toronto, it's, it's interesting here. A lot of people think because we're in Canada, Toronto is a small place. It's actually, uh, the GTA is about 5 million people. So it's a rather large place. We only, I was looking at the stats today and our stats are still, you know, pretty good. We have less than 7,000 cases in the entire city, just over uh, 500 deaths here. And a lot of those are in extended care homes. So, you know, we've been pretty good uh, at our lockdown and our government has been very strict, both federally, provincially, and uh, the city government. And so we have been, everybody's been 
operating from home in the restructuring world and everybody's uh, hit the ground running on that, including our courts. And it was interesting to hear uh, Fiona talk about that. And our courts are the same. So our chief justice is actually a former restructuring lawyer. And so he has been very uh, good about making sure that, you know, our court system, we have a specialized court called the commercial list and to make sure that we're going. So he gets it and uh, it's been business as usual. Our court hearings are now conducted via Zoom and the court office, I'm getting emails from the court office at seven, eight o'clock at night. They're working hard, they're making it seamless. There was always a push in Toronto that we were very archaic in the way that we were filing and they have done everything they can to make sure that everybody is, is electronic now. It's, and so it's been seamless and we're filing new matters uh, every day here and getting super busy. Awesome, thank you. And that leaves us last but not least, Eloise. Thanks, Monica, and um, lovely to hear the introductions from everyone else. Uh, so my name's Eloise Matsui. I'm at Stevenson Harwood in Hong Kong, and as of last week, I am now a partner. So that's uh, exciting news. <laughs> that is so exciting! Um, and great that the firm still had the confidence, I think, to you know make appointments during this time, given um, quite a number of other firms seem to have um, put, put things on pause. So we're, we're a full service firm. We have uh, offices in London, uh, Dubai, a couple of small offices in Europe, and then uh, in Hong Kong, Singapore, and a couple of small other ones in, in Asia. I'm uh, within iWork, I'm the Asia Regional Director for Asia. Um, so, you know, involved with the Hong Kong network, but also helping the other networks in, in Asia as well. So we, with regards to the coronavirus situation in Hong Kong, we have been dealing with it since Chinese New Year at the end of January. So it's over three months, about three and a half months. I think quite contrasting to a number of other jurisdictions is a lot of the measures that have been put in place in Hong Kong have not been mandated by the government. A lot of them have really been voluntary and led by the people of Hong Kong. Uh, you know, they've had experiences from living through SARS and I would also say Hong Kong people have a slight distrust in, in the government and also the news coming out of China that they kind of went above and beyond themselves to take the measures. So things like the vast majority of people wearing masks, all buildings, um, you're getting your temperature taken, restaurants of their own volition, um, you know, requiring people to declare if they've been outside the country for 14 days, if they're healthy, a lot of these things being put in voluntarily by organisations rather than mandated. Uh, once there was a bit of a second wave of cases, there were some um, more, more things put in by the government and, and the government did have certain closures for government organisations, etc. But we've seen a really low a number of cases in, in recent weeks and a number of those measures are starting to be lifted. So we're kind of on our way out, I would say. So for example, the courts reopened this Monday um, after in essence being closed since the end of January. And unlike Cayman or Canada, the court stayed in very archaic methods and there was not much e-file, well, there was no e-filing. You could make some filing for certain urgent applications if they, they met a bar. And there were only a few hearings held by video, which was already um, for the Hong Kong court quite progressive. So the registry actually reopened on Wednesday and the queue to file um, at the general registry was crazy. It was like around the block, like, of court clerks um, filing, everyone that had, you know, you wouldn't, you couldn't issue a writ during this time at all. So they'd all been backed up and just some of the photos of the, the queue is just insane and really shows that um, the courts here need to do more to, uh, you know, match match what's going on in other jurisdictions. And, and other things like today, gyms reopen after about five, six weeks of being closed. So a lot of people are excited about that and then swimming pools reopen um, given it's 
the heat in Hong Kong and summer has started. So uh, that's quite exciting. Are there any restrictions to the gym and the swimming pool? I'm just curious. Yeah, so gyms um, actually can only have classes up to 10 people. So you can do PT or um, you can, I think, go work out yourself, but classes are limited to 10. And I, I will say even before they, they've only been required to close for about five weeks, but before that, they were doing a fantastic job of like cleaning, um, you know, having extra extra cleaning, spacing things out. Um, you know, a lot of them that were doing that self-voluntarily, uh, but then, you, you know, they had been mandated uh, to close. Uh, so, um, yeah, but, you know, there's, there hasn't been that much in a way, in way of um, government assistance provided to small businesses. So I think to allow them to, uh, you know, continue operating, um, many have probably managed to make it for a little while, but they might not have been able to survive much longer. And, and for example, restaurants were never mandated to close in Hong Kong, but there were restrictions as you could only have four people dining and they could only have 50% capacity. Tables had to be spaced 1.5 metres. Uh, they have to take your temperature when you go into the restaurant. If you've been outside the country in 14 days, you can't go into the restaurant. Like, so I, I would say a bit of a different approach to the way it's been done in, in other countries. Okay. Well, thank you. And thanks to everyone for being on this panel. We really appreciate it. I know the timing of getting this together was very tight and I appreciate all the women's willingness to jump in. The first topic that we're gonna really talk about is what you're doing now to get in front of your clients or your colleagues to kind of stay top of mind. Um, I'm gonna give you mine, which is, uh, I was kind of shamed earlier by someone that was really businessy, but I don't have to do my life that way anymore. <laughs> so mine was, is less technical. Um, and then I would love to hear from some of you on the call about what you've been doing or what someone has presented to you um, to see uh, so we can all get some great ideas. But the funny thing is, I would say there's a good number of women on this call who are part of my, my story, which is involves wine, not surprising. Um, some of us had been on a wine on a birthday trip for a woman who's at the bottom left of my screen, and uh, we had loved a, one of the wineries, and they were doing a virtual tasting, and so I ordered the tasting pack and sent it to several women, and we made a date that every Thursday um, at 5:30. So this is actually they had to, we had to move it this week. <laughs> Um, that we get together and we taste one of the wines with the Facebook live tasting that the winery puts on. Um, to, in all honesty, five minutes in, we usually ditch the Facebook live because we enjoy talking to each other more than listening to that. We listen to the beginning to hear what they have to say maybe about the wine and then we are off to the races. Um, but it's been really fun. We had so much fun doing it that we Actually, today is our last wine in that pack, and we ordered a new tasting pack from another winery so we could keep it going. But it's, you know, it's a fun way to spend some time together, keep yourself in front of your clients, and, um, you know, have it be a little um, more fun, less businessy. Because uh, if you've ever seen one of my speeches before, you know that I, I, I like to hammer home that people do business with people they like and trust. That's really just the magic of it all, um, that there's a lot of us who do great work. But if you have a relationship with someone, they're more likely to come back to you time and time again. So using this time as an opportunity to um, build those relationships, strengthen them, I think is a great use of time. and. You know, if you don't like drinking wine, then we're probably not going to be friends. <laughs> so um, that's mine. Uh, Liv, do you want to throw in what you've been doing? Uh, yeah, sure. Uh, so to keep in touch um, with our clients, unfortunately, we didn't have this idea of the wine things tasting, which is a great idea. I actually envy you, Monica. 
um, but we're trying to keep in touch um, using um, all the apps available now, like Microsoft Teams and Zoom and WebEx and WhatsApp. Here in Brazil, we actually, actually before the crisis, we already used, uh, especially in our firm, uh, the Microsoft Teams to speak with the clients. So we already used to have uh, video calls with our clients. And uh, also here in Brazil, we have the, the habit of using uh, WhatsApp. So we're keeping that. But what I'm sensing is that we're having more um, web uh, calls and more video calls than usual. Uh, I think that people miss seeing other people's faces. So that's something I, I think that every day we have video conference with, with our clients. And uh, to be honest, um, I feel that we're closer to our clients now than we were before, because we get to see that there is a specific client that I'm, I've been working like on a daily basis and we're seeing each other like every day. So we're very close now. I think this is a very interesting experience and in our firm, I think it's also important to deal with our team because everybody's working from home and uh, some of us are uh, living uh, out by, uh, are living with the families, some uh, just live alone. So we, we also have a concern with our co-workers to keep in touch like all the time. And in Tosini, we, we also, uh, we were concerned about like people getting exercises and meditating uh so we became uh, available um this program that people can log in and meditate and make exercise because i think this is also great to keeping the the mental health <laughs> updated um so and also uh, i think the the most challenging part especially for me is to make like a prospect of clients because the clients that we already have contact and we, we can keep in touch, we have, we know their numbers, we can call them, we can make a video call, but with the pro prospects, I think it's more challenging. Uh, so at the beginning, um, we had uh, different uh, legislation at the beginning here in Brazil, like for labor, and uh, which are the essential uh, services that may keep uh working which are the industry that the industry that can keep on working as well so we have like zillion uh new laws and decrees all the time so uh, at the beginning we issued like many newsletters and uh bulletins to the clients like all the time and to try to to make the prospects and also to keep our clients informed uh, but then at this stage, uh, we are trying to make like tailor-made um, webinars and tailor-made newsletter um, specifically for the client's needs and what the client uh, wants us and expects from us. So it's been a, a quite challenging uh, situation. I love that you brought up that you feel like you're seeing people more because what I do, what I feel like has happened during this is a narrowing in my group, but a deepening in that. So instead of just this huge scatter shot that was a little bit easier when you could go to a conference or something where you could see a lot of people is just being more focused and making sure that you are um, building those relationships with, with um, the people, you know, that can help you, that you can help, that you can help you as you go along. So yeah. I think that's maybe one of the things I hope we take away from this difficult time. I mean, there are, you know, I, I certainly wouldn't wish this on anyone, but I think every one of us could agree there's probably some silver lining or some positivity that they're taking out of this, um, whether it's, you know, getting to spend more time with their family or, um, you know, not getting on planes so often. I'm about to light American Airlines up today because my son got on a plane today and the plane was 100% full wow. um, with about two thirds of the people with no masks on. So he sent me a picture. So 
if you want to watch me blow American up on Twitter later, <laughs> um, <laughs> after I've had a couple glasses of wine, it should be really interesting. <laughs> So, all right, Fiona, with that. <laughs> Thanks, Monica. I'll certainly be looking out for those tweets later on. Um, so in terms of what we would do in the Cayman Islands, so um, Cayman is quite small. There's um, a, a population of about 60,000 people um, and half of those are expats. Um, in terms of who our clients are as offshore lawyers, obviously we have the insolvency practitioners on island, um, but we also have the onshore law firms where we get a lot of instructions from, but also our internal referrals within the firm. Um, and I think a lot of people forget um, the potential instructions that are potentially on your doorstep. So um, I always think it's really important um, and to echo what Monica said that people generally like to work with people they like and they get on well with. So to be that go-to person within your own firm is, is, is a really good thing. Um, and, and, and obviously also just, you know, getting in front of people. And one of the initiatives that we've been doing at Walkers is putting out a, um, a, a webinar series on lots of different um, Cayman Islands topics. Um, and, you know, let's face it, we're all getting inundated with invitations to webinars. So what we try to do to set ourselves apart is by keeping it short and snappy, a 25 minute, 30 minute webinar with one or two different people each week, um, a standing slot, 10 a.m. on a Wednesday every week so that you know our clients in Cayman know all oh, right the walkers webinar is happening at this time if I can make it great if not well I'll try and make it next time and, and there's a recording etc um, so that's just something just to sort of keep on top of um, you know people's minds um, I think you know Cayman small so as part of the the lockdown measures we're, we're only allowed to exercise for an hour and a half each day. Um, and what we found with that is um, there's that extra pressure of feeling you've got to get outside and exercise when maybe pre-COVID you might not have gone for a run. But I, I guess it's that sort of little bit of freedom that you want to grasp with both hands. Um, well, how, do they, how do they exercise that? Do they give you set, set periods of time? Well, that's, that's a really, no, you can, you can exercise between, good question, you can exercise in between 5 a.m. and 7 p.m. So we have a combination of soft curfews and hard lockdown. So you have an hour and a half between, um, yeah, so 5 a.m. and um, 7 p.m. But it's difficult because you don't have enough police. So you could do 45 minutes in the morning, an hour and a half in the afternoon, and, you know, no one would know. But... They are very much um, encouraging people to report on people if they're, if they're not where they should be or they've been loitering outside for longer um, than you should be. But, you know, gyms are closed, communal swimming pools are closed, our beaches are closed, which is really tough on a lot of people. So unless you have a private swimming pool, it's, it's really difficult, which then therefore means that a lot of people are on the, on the roads. So this goes to the point about seeing people more because Cayman's quite small. The amount of times that I bump into clients who are walking with their families and well, like, oh, hey, how are you doing? Catch up on the road, basically, but obviously keeping, you know, distance, <laughs> social distancing in mind on the other side of the street. But um, yeah, it's, it's certainly an interesting one, but I, I think that's right. You know, we're all, we're all in this together. So um, as Liv mentioned, I think we're all, we're all getting closer by bonding over these, over these experiences. Monica. Oh. Thank you, Fiona. How about you, Leanne? <laughs> I should just leave mine unmuted, but I'm afraid that my opening of my champagne was too loud. <laughs> <laughs> I love that sound. That's never too loud. <laughs> and I, I love your wine idea. Like that's, that's fabulous. I think that for, you know, clients who are close to you, I mean, quite frankly, most of, I don't know the home addresses of most of my clients. Um, which isn't a bad thing. So, uh, but those people who are, have become friends, I think are easier to continue to connect with. And it's interesting because I feel like you, Monica, that my world has, has shrunk a little bit in that, you know, I'm, I'm much better at, at keeping in, in touch with those people who I know the best. 
And, but I also feel as though I've been getting to know some people like Liv said in a, in a different and better way through this. And I, it's, it's interesting because I find things like Zoom, it's a kind of a personal platform in a way. I mean, you're seeing my house and people comment, this is, there's a Lego village behind me and it's been growing through COVID. Um, and, you know, so when, when people see that, they, they watch it kind of get a little bit bigger through this and it becomes a little bit of a personal thing. The fact that my son has not been in here yet is a miracle because most of my clients have met my, my son now. Um, and I've seen a lot of their kids and, and I find people are, are great about that. So I do feel that, that in a way I'm getting to know certain clients better um, than I did. It is harder to reach those people that you don't really know. I do find that that's a, a bit of a challenge. Um, a couple of things that I've seen for this, I had um, Zoom drinks, which is a big popular one. Tomorrow morning I had a Zoom coffee. Um, one thing that I saw, um, it was an accounting firm do here that I thought was interesting because it's all about keeping front of mind, was they sent around um, through Cineplex a link. So it's the, a, a code and it's to a movie. So, you know, enjoy a movie on us, you know, something like that where you could reach, you know, the, the spend probably isn't that much. You can reach a lot of people. It's virtual and you can send it, um, you know, obviously via email, which I thought that was kind of a really cool idea. The other thing I like to do is, is try and be a bit personal and I sometimes will send, you know, memes to people just kind of out of the blue that I find that are funny and goodness knows there's a lot of them out there. So um, that just kind of, Kind of goes more with my personality and so just kind of send a meme and i don't even necessarily have to say anything I just send it and it's from me and it's just about you know connecting and, and just keeping that little connection and staying front of mind we're all i'm sure we're all busy now but we're all about to get a lot busier and so i think even when we come out of this it's still going to be very difficult to continue to do client development because we're all going to be so busy and you know it's, it's hard, we're all, you know, a lot of us are, are homeschooling kids at the same time. We're trying to tolerate our significant others, which is a full-time job. It's, you know, it's really a, it's a challenge. And I think that challenge is, is going to continue. So I think things like this are great to start thinking about. It's not just when we're in lockdown, it's also when we're, you know, crazy busy, which we're gonna be. So Leanne, we want you to add your favorite meme into the chat box <laughs> so that everyone can get, get it and laugh. Most of mine involve Trump, so I'm not sure how well that'll go over. I don't know if there's any supporters, but... Um, you gotta be able to laugh, right? Um, yeah. All right, so Eloise, that, that's you now. What have you been doing? Sure, so I guess I'll echo probably quite a lot of things that the the others spoke about, you know, uh, the, the webinars and newsletters. And, and really, I've also found WhatsApp. And and when you have a call or a Zoom with a client, taking the extra time to talk to them about how they're going or, or what their experience. And and it, for those clients that you already know well, it, it I find you're actually getting closer to them. Um, and I think that, that that's a really good thing coming out of this. Also, I would echo... Fiona's comments about um, internal BD and referrals. It depends on what type of organisation you're in, but because we're not bound by being in the office, you, for us, for me, being in a firm with offices in different places, I'm trying to connect more with those in the other offices. So we have a restructuring and insolvency global group and you know, we've, we had one by Global Calls and we decided to, you know, put a newsletter together um, showcasing what um, what changes have been going on in every jurisdiction that we cover um, to really have something, uh, you know, that kind of yeah, covers all the jurisdictions, talks about what's going on um, in the insolvency world because of coronavirus. So you've got it kind of packaged together. So then it's really, you know, we sent it for, via a mail out and, and LinkedIn and, um, but it's also there ready um, for when other clients ha have queries and, and really showcases a kind of global team. Using LinkedIn a lot, I, I, that's something I did before, but, um, you know, continue 
continue to do so. And I think people are spending more time on it probably because um, everyone's spending more time on social media. Uh, one thing which my um, office is doing in Hong Kong, uh, which is probably quite a, a Hong Kong specific thing, and apologies if I ruin this to Kat or Ashling who are on the call because I actually sent it to them, but they haven't probably haven't received it yet, is in Hong Kong, because restaurants are still open and everyone wears a mask, what's quite um, normal is often restaurant gives you a small paper bag to put your mask in while you're eating, or people take their own like a Ziploc bag or, or kind of mask storage. So my firm's actually made Stevenson Harwood branded uh, mask holders. So it's pretty much just like a plastic, sorry, I don't have it in, in, in arm's reach. It's just like a little plastic sleeve, but about the size of a mask you know, with our branding on it and, you know, people just carry it in their handbag or, or, or whatever. And then when they sit down, you have to have the mask on and then until you eat. And so then you just, you know, can put it in there. So I, um, you know, just sent that out to, you know, 15, 20 of, of my closer um, clients in Hong Kong, ones that I thought would use it, not, you know, some people be like, that's ridiculous. But um, just with a little handwritten note in it saying, you know, hope you're staying safe and, and healthy. And people are gradually um, coming back to the office or, or splitting their time between work from home and the office. So it's good timing um, and people are getting more willing to, to go out to eat as well. So just another um, little thing. And I'm sure it cost minimal um, money for them to order that because it's, it's really just like a plastic sleeve with, with the branding on it. Yes, Melissa, what do you... <laughs> I, wanted to ask, I wanted to ask Eloise a question because you guys are a lot, or at least hopefully you're a little bit further ahead of us in the Americas. Like how did going back to work and doing shared time and obviously you're in a very, you know, um, concentrated area, but how did that work about and how did you, how long did it take to do it? Cause that's just like one thing that just, especially like I work in New York city, but I commute in and I'm just trying to figure out how the heck that's going to work. And I'm just curious how, how that sort of has translated through, your area and, and Fiona or, or whoever else, or maybe other people who have a similar situation? Sure, I'd, I'd say it's quite gradual. Different companies are doing it in different ways, but probably the way my company's doing it is, is fairly standard. It's actually from this week, they said the office is reopened. You can, you can come back to work, um, but for anyone who wants to continue working at home, you're welcome to do so and no questions will be asked. You just have to you know, let your line manager know because schools are still closed. So people that do have um, balancing childcare requirements, they probably may want to continue working from home. And they've said, avoid traveling at peak time. So you don't, you're not expected to be there at you know, nine o'clock or, or whatever your office opening time is. You can come later or earlier. And uh, it, again, it said, you know, don't, you don't necessarily have to have lunch at peak time, which normally Hong Kong people do have a very standard lunch hour. And w in our office, we have two people to an office normally. And what they've said is there's no requirement to have more, have both people in the office. So they've set up a lot of spare desks, um, either in, in spare offices that they had, or also, you know, our meeting rooms, they've kind of taken all the walls down and, and put desks quite spread out. Or, you know, you can agree with the person in your office, you might work alternating days between the two of you. Um, you still, you have to have your temperature taken when you go into the office and, and you know, sign off that it's uh, below, um, you know, below 37.5 37 or whatever it is. Um, you don't have to wear a mask in the office, but you can if you want. And, you know, they still encourage, um, you know, regular hand cleaning, etc. They also still discourage any in-person meetings, even internally. Um, so even if the person you're having a meeting with in the office is in the office as well, um, you're still encouraged to do the meeting via Zoom um, and discourage clients from coming to the office. Um, if someone does have to come, they are under the same requirements to have their temperature taken, et cetera. Yeah, I wonder if we ever go back to the full on meetings in person and everyone feeling the need to be in the same room or if there's some new normal that's kind of maybe not as extreme as where we are right now but something in between because I think there's a lot of people who won't be really excited about cramming you know 12 people into a conference room anytime soon 
Monica, I think that's a really, really good point. I think, I think a lot of people who didn't think working from home or doing Zoom calls, et cetera, who didn't, you know, who thought that they didn't work, um, are probably now believers. I know my, my husband, for example, he was always a, I've got to work in the office, I can't work from home, now fully set up at home. He's like, well, actually everything works. I, you know, I could possibly, and he has a, um, a compromised immune system. So he's like, well, actually when, when the offices do reopen, I'm one of those people who shouldn't be rushing back. Um, and he's, you know, fully, fully set up, etc. I mean, just to echo what Eloise said, I mean, in the Cayman Islands, you know, law firms, county firms, they're all very much still closed for now when everyone's working from home. But there has been talks to the extent that um, the number of COVID cases remain relatively low. Um, you know, that my firm has sort of worked out exactly which attorneys would be able to return to work quite easily. You know, there are, you know, given that the schools are still closed, there's obviously going to be difficulties for some people in terms of just going back, you know, as soon as, as soon as the offices are open and that there wouldn't be any questions asked with respect to those people who couldn't, you know, practically go into the office. Um, but I think it would very much be a sort of phased approach. Um, I also have a junior that, that sits in my office. So again, with the social distance, distancing requirements it might be that I take you know two or three days of the week you know in the office and we sort of split the office that way um, so yeah I mean I think it's it's very interesting to hear how things are working in Hong Kong and that they are working um, and that's you know we're in extraordinary times but you know soon come we, we will be back and it will be a, a new normal exactly yeah I'm gonna pick on Carrie Ann because I can see her um we've had this discussion multiple times right so carrie ann um, works at alex partners and lives the traditional consultant life of you know being on the road all week and we've talked about a little bit kind of how during this process you've come to realize okay there are a lot of things that i maybe don't actually need to be sitting at the client site to do um, and whether kind of, Carrie Ann, do you have a thought or opinion on how much you go back to that kind of traveling, you know, Sunday to Thursday or Monday to Friday? I think we'll go back, but I think it won't be the same because at the beginning of an engagement, when your client's in distress and you're trying to develop the trust in the relationship, I've found, and I've had a couple new cases here recently, and it's, it's, it's significantly harder to do that even over video. Not all of them want to do video. My team is all about the video because we think it's helpful and you can, you know, especially sometimes it's easier to read lips a little bit when you're, somebody's got an accent that you're a little bit like, it could be a Southern accent, it could be a European accent, but seeing their lips, sometimes you can actually, you know, kind of hear what they're saying. But I do think we'll go back to some of that the meetings, the important meetings, the big meetings, but not necessarily with 50 people in the room, because we all know that all 50 of those people don't need to be in the room. So maybe it's a handful of decision makers and people who can actually, you know, negotiate things. And then maybe there's video for the rest, but I think it'll be a hybrid. And I think we'll have, you know, we'll, people will think a lot more, both the consultants and the attorneys, as well as the clients saying, hey, we did this remotely back during COVID, why do, we need, why do we need to pay? Let's be real, why do we need to pay for you to come here? And there are some really good reasons for people to travel, but I just don't think it'll be quite as much. And I think we're gonna really be thinking about how can we make a modification of this work? Because I also don't think that this is going away anytime soon. It may be modified, we may go back to work, but it, you know, given everything we've heard it's not going to be everything's going to open up and be all good you know in the next two months so i think there'll be a, a true modification of the way we work yeah i have someone said to me the other day it's not like it's a light switch we're not going to go from where we are today to the lights being on in one flick right it's going to take a lot of process to get there and what the end result is i don't think any of us know um so I think it, it will be interesting. Before we go on to what is really the second topic, but we're, we don't have much time, does anyone have 
uh, want to share either something that they've done or something that they've been a part of that they thought was great for, um, you know, keeping yourself in front of your colleagues, clients, and um, prospective clients. You have to unmute yourself if you're going to talk or raise your hand and wave at me and I'll try to see you. Tara, all right, you're unmuted. Oh, wait, no, there you go, wait, there. We're good. Um, I have a question. I'm just wondering if anybody on the um, call has an idea of things that maybe um, the women's groups in their firms have been doing because ours has really not done much of anything and I would love to maybe be able to take back an idea um, that someone else has used that might kind of help me you know brainstorm and, and bring something up that we could do with the the women's group in our firm. So I'm going to pick up Liz Boydston who just raised her hand um, because we I know that she's been doing some things so Liz take it. Uh, yeah so my my Dallas office, not just the women, but the Dallas office, we do monthly happy hour Zooms um, where everybody is you know, encouraged to drink or whatever, and we don't talk about work at all. We literally just talk about you know, who's buying houses and how people bring their kids on um, to where you just kind of get that uh, more feel you know, of what your life is like. We do a, our women's group does do a Zoom um, every month as well. And it's also generally around a happy hour just because this way we're not interrupting daytime work. Um, what I've done, I, I work with a bunch of women associates for the first time in my life. It's amazing. They're all bankruptcy associates. And so what I started doing is the one of the wine. So almost everything I do revolves around wine. Um, but uh, one of the wine companies that um, I really like is doing, was doing and probably still is a Mother's Day pack of three rosés for like 90 bucks with free shipping. Um, and so I literally sent that to all of my female associates and a couple of my clients and a few friends. And it was just like, let's do a, let's do a three week happy hour. And so on like a Saturday. So with my female associates, they wanted to do a Saturday, which I thought was amazing. I think that means I'm super fun as a mentor. Um, but so I now have a Saturday, um, like at 5 PM where I do, and, and it's my, the calendar invites are Zooms, they're corporate Zooms and they say, mm -hmm no work talk at all so we literally do not talk about work and all we do is talk about like what they're doing and like one of them just got married uh two weeks before COVID-19 happened uh, or at least until it hit Texas um and so we just talk about that one of them moved during the pandemic um we just it's and it's been really great for them and they've met each other because we're spread out all across the nation and there's like one of us from um from like well I guess five cities um or five states and so they, they're like learning and meeting each other. Um, and so I've been doing stuff like that just because it's a way to not talk about work, mm -hmm. but really get to know somebody like you would if you were, you know, working on a really big project together and you got to go to have drinks. Yeah, on the call this morning, um, Matma from India was talking about that she's been using a lot of this time to mentor other females. Uh, she was the first like insolvency professional in India, which makes her a total badass. But the thing she said is she said she was building a battalion of women. And I was like, I'm going to steal that. And we should all be working on building our battalion of women uh, because it just sounds so awesome uh, and encompasses exactly how I feel about this, you know, that we are, in this together it is a bit of a war for a lot of us as we bang our heads against the 60 year old white man desk all day um but i i love that and i know liz does a really good job of making sure she hires and mentors women um there's a lot of women on this call that do and so um i think this is a great opportunity to do that when you can frankly, have a Zoom call where you don't have to include everyone, right? You, um, it's not as obvious as when you're sitting in the office or you all walk out to lunch together. And as one of my former bosses used to say, everyone wonders if y'all are going shopping, which I don't think anyone actually wondered. She was just a really evil human being. Um, but so I do love the use of this time to build our battalion. Um, and to remind each other that, right, life isn't, this life is not a pie, 
that all, you know, higher tide rises all boats. There's only, there's not only eight pieces. If you take one, that doesn't mean there's one left. So um, it's great. This is an opportunity to do that. And it's a good segue into, we'll run through real quick, is what you are doing now that you feel like is putting you in a great situation, putting you in the best light situation you can be in when um, we do get back to whatever is quote normal. Um, for me, it's really, uh, May is my birthday month. If you know me well, you know I like to celebrate the whole month. And so this pandemic really puts a damper on my birthday month. Um, but uh, that also means in Texas that my CLE is due this month. While they did give us an extension, I do try to um, I try to follow the rules. And so there's a ton of free CLE, CPE going on right now for uh, related to COVID. And so, you know, I use this opportunity if I've got the hour it's they're usually at little lunch hour to take as many CLEs because I know in the fall when we're really busy and even when we because we've gotten an extension that I'll end up jammed. So does anyone else on the panel or frankly anyone on this call want to talk about what they're doing? Um, whether it's sure. writing articles, reading books. Monica. I'll, I'll go ahead. I think just echoing what Leanne was saying about, um, yeah, we're all busy, but we are going to be even busier and, and have less time for the business development. So I've really just been thinking about doing something every day. And also my, my point before about, you know, internal connections. My, my firm has a really strong aviation practice in aviation finance and disputes. But honestly, I haven't worked with those colleagues before. So I've... Uh, kind of driven connecting the restructuring insolvency people with the aviation people um, because, you know, we can all tell that that's an industry that there is going to be work coming out of and it hasn't resulted in a huge matter yet, but I would say that, you know, they have been advising clients on various issues and then are coming to us for questions rather than, you know, just doing it themselves. They're involving the R&I people, which I think is a good sign for like, planting the seeds for, you know, if, if the matter does come or they've tried to pitch, pitch for some work and then, you know, included our credentials as well, rather than just limiting it to the aviation specific um, lawyers within the firm. Monica, um, yeah. thanks, for that. thanks for that, Eloise. I mean, I think certainly um, what we always typically do, while we've got a bit of time on our hands for now and preparing for battle and building our battalion, et cetera, I, I think it's really important to, you know, keep abreast of movements, for example. We're all on LinkedIn and just making sure we know where, where our clients are and, um, you know, the people that we want to target. It's not only about current clients, but, but also new clients and, um, um, and obviously understanding about, you know, people, you know, such as Melissa on the, on the, on the call today, she's, she's just won a, you know, she's got a great promotion to, to move to Capital One, which is fantastic, which um, I didn't know about and congratulations to her. Um, but it's also knowing about the practicalities as well when we go, when we go back, you know, in terms of e-signing documents and e-filing with the courts and, you know, keeping abreast of, you know, new legal requirements that it, certainly in the Cayman Islands, things are moving rapidly. Um, to the extent that you know you can notarize documents um, virtually now and that there was a new legislation passed only a couple of weeks ago so it's just making sure you're on top of all of these things there's also proposed reforms um, with respect to our already sophisticated and robust restructuring regime um, the Cayman Islands government are looking at um, putting in um, another process by which people can take um, you know take the benefit of of a restructuring moratorium in the Cayman Islands. It's just, you know, making sure you've got on the button advice for your clients and you're as fresh as possible so that you can react so quickly um, because, you know, this is essentially, even though we're busy now, this is essentially the calm before the storm. So it's, it's very much a time to be tooling up and knowing exactly where we're going to be um, when we do get back to the um, new modified normal. Yes, that's great advice, Fiona. I mean, it is for all of us in all of our countries, it changes every day. Exactly. Um, and so trying to 
you know, trying to keep up with it is difficult, but, um, you know, it's going to set us all ahead of the curve. Uh, Melissa, I know you had something you wanted to add. I just wanted to add two things. I think one thing that's really, before I go in-house back in the private practice, I think now is a really good time. If you have colleagues that are like in M&A or litigation or corporate that are not that busy, but trying to figure out how to get onto the bankruptcy thing, now is the time to like put them into like PLI or in America, like other CLE courses where they can learn bankruptcy 101 and be helpful for you <coughs> later on and, and get their CLEs and stuff like that. So that's from a professional point of view. And then from a personal point of view, I try to make a point just to reach out to like, and not necessarily professionally, but more sometimes a friend, just somebody who I know is like living alone or like, you know, doesn't necessarily have the support system, just like once a week to be like, hey, how's it going? I mean, I recently had a friend of ours who, a childhood friend of hers committed suicide. And I've been sending like jokes and texts like every other day to her or just checking in. And that matters. And I just think sometimes we forget that taking two minutes out to send a text, it can make somebody's day and let, let them know you care and, and really can make a big difference. Right. For sure. I would agree with Melissa. I think I was thinking that before she even said that. Now is the time where we seem to have, we have less time and more time. You know, we're, we're not traveling as much. We're home. We, we're not going out at night. You know, spending a couple minutes a day just you know, sending a quick email, how's it going? Are you staying sane? Is everybody healthy? Um, you know, it's a good thing as a person, but it's also a good thing as a business development tool because you can do it to people that in, in, it's not unusual and people don't think it's weird. You're just reaching out saying, hey, how's it going? You know, this is weird. Are you, are you busy? Are you not busy? Like, is everything okay? And you're showing that you a care, keeping top of mind and you're, you're, to I think a point earlier from a number of the women on the panel, you're deepening that relationship because they remember you reached out during this time when even though we're all busy, not everybody's doing that. So I think that- Le 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 oh, Sorry, Karen. Leanne, I see your hand. I wanted oh. to, um, I wanted to uh, say that Carrie Ann is right on top of it. Um, and that's one of the things that you know, I, I work from home. I have a uh, independent contractor that works with me out of Reston, Virginia. So we do everything virtual and I don't have that, you know, company um, behind me to just visit with people. Um, but one of the things I was thinking of doing is um, I try not to, I try to post on LinkedIn, but not be a crazy poster on LinkedIn. And when I find people that like something or, or whatever, I said, you know, I need to just give that person a call and um, just check in with them and see how they're doing um, and make it more of a personal thing. Um, but to just stay out there so people know, hey, she's around. <laughs> Don't forget yeah. about me. And so that's what I've been trying to do during this time. And that's, that's one, of, one of the things that I'm starting to do now is to make those calls and just say, hey. Yeah, about two years ago, I started a practice where if it was your birthday, I thought like if I saw it on Facebook, if your number was in my phone, I was going to call you. Like I'm not just posting on Facebook or something. I was going to take the couple minutes to call you. A lot of times I just send it up in uh, voicemail, but sometimes, you know, just that little bit of effort, it doesn't take more than a few minutes. And, you know, my kind of like Leanne, I mean, my business now is a lot of sales, right? It's a lot of being in front of people. And so just that little extra step. I'm going to say what Rocky put in the comments, because I don't know if everyone's looking at the chat, but Rocky Patel says that she tries to challenge herself to make one virtual introduction between two people who don't or wouldn't otherwise know each other each week. Uh, which I think this is a great time to do that um, for people who should know each other who don't. Um, again, that doesn't take any, you know, t real time or effort, but a lot of times people think that it's not worth it unless it's their direct contact or their direct, you know, business line. But I think being a connector is a huge value to people. And so even if it doesn't, you know, immediately first circle 
benefit you, um, the ripple effect will really help. So we're a few minutes past our time. I want to thank Liv, Fiona, Leanne, and Eloise for being on this panel. I also want to thank Sherry for being our mother hen and getting all of us uh, together and creating that awesome background that I couldn't get to work. But um, yes, yeah, so uh, you know, I'm sure iWork is going to be coming out with more programming. Um, I know we were, I think, one more or was two was yes Tuesday the last Tuesday one? one there's one, one more. One okay, more. one more. Um and I know that we'll we're working on there's a panel later this month that is what was supposed to happen at Insol uh that got canceled. So you know uh Tony was on earlier this morning and gave a plug to remind us all and I'll, so I'll do it for her here that you know, as women, a lot of us carry the extra load um, and that it really is meaningful when you refer business to give it to another woman, even if you've got to, because there's five guys on your team and they want to send it to a man, that you also include that woman in the two line of the email. Um, and especially for a lot of us who maybe haven't been able to give 100% of time to work right now because you're homeschooling or you have ailing parents or whatever it may be, that um, it will really help all of us in the long term. So please remember um, to build your battalion. So can I make one more comment, Monica? Sure, sure. So I'm not sure if I missed the first few minutes, but um, I'm not sure if everybody knows that um, Sherry uh, recently became a grandma for the oh. first time earlier this week. So may Woo. great congratulations in order for her. And it's a it's a little girl. So she has a little granddaughter. So she's she building her, her battalion Sherry. from inside. Yeah. <laughs> from the ground up. <laughs> right. <laughs> All right, well, thank you everyone. Happy Thursday night or early Friday for those of you across the globe. Um, I really enjoyed spending time with the first panel. Um, thank you. And have a great night. Thank Thanks you. Thanks for having yeah. me. Thanks Bye. so much, Monica. Thanks, Bye. ladies. Bye, Bye Thanks, everyone. everyone. Great to see you all. Likewise. I only came on for the accent. <laughs> <laughs> and Same. you got it. Same. Not enough, Great to but see enough. You. I, mean, I got some. <laughs> <laughs> see you, Melissa. Take care. Bye see for us. Bye bye. Sherry, do you know how it is? You you set the the picture, your profile picture, so that when you get off the video, you can just have a picture on there. Do you know how to do it? I've been trying to figure it out. I've touched every button on this thing. I have no idea how to do it. You're on mute. You're on mute, Cherry. Hi, Liz. I think if you just do um, if if you just do the virtual background with your picture, just yeah. But then you see then you see two of me. I don't know why. I th I think oh. if I put you know what I'm saying like when I stop my video. Some people's picture comes up, and then at least you could they could see you're there. You're just the video stopped. Yeah, I just don't I haven't, know. I haven't figured you don't know that how to do it. No. All right, I'm sure I can find it online somewhere if I just know the the right names for it. <laughs> Congratulations, uh, Carrie. Oh, thanks. And Carrie Ann's done that before, so check with her. She may. Oh, okay. She might know. Yeah. Awesome. Take care. Thanks. Bye. Bye.